But um, I've also enjoyed my work with the queer porn community up in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I love working with April Flores. Um, we love April Flores too. Yeah, and we haven't done a lot of work together uh, recently. Um, she seems to be doing more kind of solo work these days. Um, but we still keep in touch, and I think she she's one of the very few BBWs that I hang out with on a regular basis. Um, and uh, you know, obviously Courtney Trouble and Just Lee and all those people up in San Francisco, I, I adore them. <laughs> How could you not? I mean, it's, yeah. It's well, sure. you know, it's kind of funny. I was asked a question on a radio interview last night about uh, girl girl scenes, mm -hmm. and um, back in college and after college, I used to date women, and I don't want to say that porn turned me off of women, but mainstream porn turned mm -hmm. mainstream porn girl girl scenes turned me off of women. Mainly because I, I really genuinely think that they're doing, like, gay for pay work isn't really hot because there's no chemistry. Yeah. You know, you're going through the motions and you're like, oh, you're kind of doing like this, like, hetero male fantasy of, oh, pillow fights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to touch it right there. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, 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 yes. I'm having an orgasm because you're, like, you know, you're playing with something that really isn't in a Raja's so. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, and so I, you know, over over time, you know, I don't really want to do scenes where I can't be authentic, and and so I, you know, like when I get requests for girl girl like content trade scenes, I usually turn them down not because um, not because I don't like the girl, but I kind of don't think that there would be chemistry, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but like when the when the queer porn mafia calls me from San Francisco, I always come running. <laughs> it's like the bat phone. Hello. It's like, <laughs> it's like a pink phone with like you know jewels on it. <laughs> that sounds like the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, and like a dildo handle. You know, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> You're like talking to the walls. You know, um, you know, and 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 queer porn and obviously is something that is. Something I really like doing because it's emotion based. I really am attracted to the people that I do the scenes with up there. And it's definitely not because of the money, because, you know, much like Padded Kink, the pay rate is completely like <laughs> it's non existent. It basically pays for my travel up there and back. Um, but I enjoy the scenes, and because of it, I think the fans like watching the scenes because they can tell I'm having a really good time, as well as my scene partner. And um, yeah. So those are the scenes I really enjoy doing. And also, I, I found just this last year because of the movie that I, I'm also doing, uh, that I'm also promoting, which is um, Kelly Shabari's Overloaded, is um, fans. And I think at the end of everything, if I like step back and look at the scenes that I really enjoyed, it's the ones where I actually had really good chemistry. Yeah. You know, regardless of whether they're a porn star, a fan, um, male, female, um, uh, Gender queer, you know, depending, it doesn't really matter who the person is. If I have chemistry with that person, then the scene is amazing, and and I think the fans like watching that because they can tell. You know, when I first started out, totally. Yeah, when I first started out, people, were, you know, I I always kind of imagined the porn that I used to watch. So like a lot of my first scenes are horrible scenes, <laughs> where I'm like completely pretending to be this, like a, like a porn star that I've watched who was not plus size, mm -hmm. and so my verbal reactions are really hokey, <laughs> my positions are really bad, my facial expressions are really fake, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm trying really hard not to sweat. And about a year in, I I had done a couple of scenes for. Um, zero tolerance and I had a very different kind of fan reaction because I it was like in the middle of August in Los Angeles which means it's like 105 degrees yeah. my makeup is dripping down my face my hair is sticking to my head you know my you know we're, we're doing a very physical scene so like one false eyelash has fallen uh -huh. off you know my my mascara is like completely on my cheek you know <laughs> and I looked at it and I said, you know, that's not sexy. But then um, the fan reaction was so overwhelming. They were like, wow, you're actually like sweating, having sex. It's real and it seems genuine. And so I was able to masturbate to it. 
That's because awesome. it was so hot. And I was like, and then there was like a switch that went off in my head, and I was like, oh, guys like seeing things that are real, not like hokey hokey stuff, because I guess people have gotten tired of the hokey hokey stuff. Yeah. It's so, true. so ever since then, I've been more um, interested in doing things that are more genuine and authentic, even though I may not look like amazing model porn star girl. Um, I'm still very, very happy with the end product because the fans are too. That's awesome. That's really, really exciting. I love that news. <laughs> um, what, are, what are your favorite porn movies to watch? Like, do you have any specific titles that you really like or any that have inspired you? Um, I've watched porn since I was like 10. <laughs> nice. um, because I grew up in Japan, a lot of the porn was actually on um, late night TV. Oh, really? Because this is way before, like, cable, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm ancient. So <laughs> this is before the Internet. So um, I grew up watching, like, the Emmanuel series on TV in Japan, and then I went from there to finding, like, my dad's stash. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it was vivid. Um, and then all through college and after college, I, I went through, like, a pretty good, like, vivid film phase. Um, I don't know if I have like any like kind of go-to movies. I, I, I have performers that I like watching, um, mainly because I can tell that they're not phoning it in. Mm -hmm. I love Katsuni. I think she's absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, for me, she's, she's mixed because she's, she's French and Vietnamese. So she's a, a mixed Asian nationality, you know, culture. Uh, mm -hmm. former like I am, although I'm, I'm plus size, um, and she enjoys like interacting with the camera. It's not just, oh, I'm over here doing the scene and there's like a camera out there yeah. um, filming what I'm doing. I'm a big fan of POV scenes. Um, not necessarily POV with the guy holding the camera with the penis, but it's more, I like it when the performer interacts with me through the screen. Um, so I haven't watched a lot of interactive movies, but I think I would probably enjoy that. Um, but yeah, I don't really have like a go-to. Um, I I like reading a lot of my porn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's just because I'm like a brainy nerdy dork. So. Me too. Yeah, if if there's some way that we could take that and put that on the screen. Um, that would be great, but I don't know how. <laughs> You're like hot women just reading erotica. Right. Well, you know, that's, that's why I really liked uh, things like Red Shoe Diaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked all the Zalman King stuff um, because it was very kind of cerebral and then fantasy reenacted, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I like things that kind of leave a little to the imagination, I guess, when, I, when I'm watching it. But then at the same time, I also masturbate to like gangbang scenes, so. Yeah. Yeah. A little I, column A, a little bit I'm of column like B. Guy. Yeah, I'm like a guy. I, I don't really have like a go-to. I I have like a, a list of different things that I like watching and depending on the day. I like variety. Because I think that's the point of pornography is is variety. Yeah. You know, like if you did the same, if you watch the same porn over and over and over and over, then, or you watch the same performer over and over and over. Yeah. Then what's the difference between that and like a virtual girlfriend? You know? That's true. I, I'm okay, I'm completely okay with like fans going, okay, well this week I'm watching uh, you know, April Flores' stuff, and next week I'm going to watch Kelly Shabari's stuff, the week after that I'm going to watch something else. I'm like, yeah, you should do that. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. Which is I'm not a fan of like solo girl sex. I'd much rather, I, I like multi-girl sex because I like watching other girls interact with other guys and girls and themselves. Because it's interesting. You know, I mean, there, there are days I wake up and I'm like, oh, Today I'm really into, I went through a whole phase where I was like, I just want to watch Japanese girls kissing, which is hot, by the way. Um, you know, because they're, I don't know if it's because we like tentacle porn, I don't know what it is, but, um, you know, Asian girls kissing, especially specifically Japanese girls, they seem to know how to work their lips and tongue for the camera. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, and they don't even have to be naked. <laughs> it's like note to self: go watch Japanese. Yes, girls totally. Me. Go look it up. It's it's. You just kind of sit there and go. Whoa. Yeah, that's gonna be like the rest of my day, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get paid for it. <laughs> It'll be really exciting, right? Like there should be a collection of just 
girls kissing. I, I think guys too. Um, I think that that's not necessarily just a girl fantasy. I think that guys really enjoy watching girls kissing. Oh yeah, no, I, mean, it's been I on plenty of mainstream films, you know, totally. as as a uh, as a like a sexualized comedic point. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Um, so we need to start wrapping up soon because we're going to oh. run out of time. Um, but one thing, what, are, what do you think are, um, like one thing that you would, that you, one piece of advice that you would give to women, like sex, your sex advice that you'd give specifically to women? Um, I think that it's really important to communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that there are no stupid questions and I think there are no stupid comments. You know, and I think that communicating with your partner what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And just because you watched a porn film where a girl is like getting like double penetrated uh, in pile driver doesn't mean that you're going to enjoy that. <laughs> you know, um, there uh, there was like a Kinsey report on on women and sexuality, and um, and and it was kind of scary because so many women has said that they, that they had experienced pain in intercourse, but they never said anything about it, you know? So they just kind of, because they didn't know any better or they just figured that that's how it was or they were worried that they were somehow flawed. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, sex is supposed to be fun and supposed to be orgasmic. And if you're having pain, you're not gonna ever have an orgasm. And so yeah, I, I'm a big fan of couples that watch porn and couples that communicate um, and, and for people, even if you don't have a partner, to explore and find out what works for you. You know, kind of like Pat a Kink. I don't want to be beaten, you know, but some girls really sexualize that. You know, some girls don't want to be tied up, but I do, and I completely sexualize that. So, so I think understanding that everything, you know, that things are different for everybody, but if you don't take the time to figure out what works for you, you're gonna have like this life that's like at eighty percent. Yeah, can't be at one hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Can you just you know give us a little heads up on any new exciting projects that are going on for you? Um, I <laughs> actually this Friday we're doing a screening. Um, Megan Andalou is a sex educator. Who's oh, I love amazing. Megan. And she, I'd given her a copy of my. Uh, I did a fan movie called mm -hmm. Kelly Shavari's Overloaded. And a couple of people have called it the first feminist Bukaki movie because I'm having such a good time. I love that news. That's so exciting. <laughs> because Bukaki is, you know, stereotypically a very misogynist act where the girl is sitting in the middle of the room and guys are like dumping loads all over her and she just has to take it whether she likes it or not. And, and other porn performers have had Bukaki movies that they've done and you find out later in their autobiography that he has such a horrible time. Um, but in my case, I had such a great time interacting with my fans. My fans were super polite. It was like the most polite bukkake ever. <laughs> Pardon it's me. Like, it's a Canadian bukkake. <laughs> it's a polite <laughs> bukkake. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so I should do that. I should go up to Canada and do like the world's most polite bukkake. <laughs> Um, so but uh, Meg, I had given her a copy of the movie, and she seemed to find similar points in it. And so she's actually screening it this Friday, um, which I think is tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night um, at her center in Rhode Island, and I'm going to be there. Center for sexual health and pleasure. pleasure yeah. <laughs> pleasure and health. Yeah, I've I've yeah. there before. And, yeah. Yeah, and so that's this week, and I'm spending the rest of the week here in New York. Um, awesome. I'm going to be back in LA. Um, I'm doing my first girl-girl um, girl anal scene for Evil Angel. <laughs> so that's exciting because I I don't I've only done one anal scene on camera and that was with a fan, so he's not super endowed, um, which is why he was able to do anal with me. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, yay! It doesn't pay to have a giant penis because <laughs> you can't have anal. <laughs> Um, so we're, I'm doing my first girl role anal for Evil Angel, um, and then I'm just going to keep promoting Kelly Shabari's Overloaded. Um, my my keep my fingers crossed. Hope I don't hope I don't jinx it. I'm hoping that it'll get nominated for AVN. Um, I'm doing a huge breast cancer fundraiser at AVN in January this year um, to benefit Holly Stevens and her um, her legacy because my mom actually passed away this past summer because of breast cancer as well. So. So, um, 